as we've seen this transition, you know, of miners specifically sort of all over the globe uh, after China's uh, not the most recent crackdown, I guess, two crackdowns ago, hard to keep up sometimes. Um, but there's been conversation with miners of there are in mining communities of um, like non-domestic miners, more specifically, like mostly formerly Chinese based miners having like difficult times adjusting to operating in the U.S. from like hosting agreements being structured differently and different expectations to power agreements also being structured differently. And there's just like a steep learning curve from how they've always operated and structured things in, in Chinese mining business and, and basically norms to North American mining norms. Um, just curious if you could speak to that maybe a little bit from your experience and perspectives, things you've seen. Uh, maybe that's completely false. Like I've seen small examples of it here and there, but uh, yeah, I just want to hand that to you and, and hear your thoughts on that sort of transition and how like non-US based miners coming to the US have, have had an easy or difficult time adjusting and setting up shop here. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's a range. I wouldn't say it's, you know, all all miners coming from China are facing sort of the same difficulties. I think some of the largest, most sophisticated ones, I think, are you know pretty good at it. Maybe they already had connections here. They sort of understand how, how the markets work and, and others struggle with it a little bit more. And I frankly sympathize with them because, I mean, even someone who's been in the mining business in the US for a while, it's still tough to like under, under, I still have to rely on lawyers a lot of the time it's still tough to understand like uh certain like power agreements certain regulations that that exists and so yeah the, there's definitely challenges there but i mean one one thing in particular too is just uh even like how you set up a certain facility in, in the u.s you obviously there's sort of local regional guidelines national guidelines a completely different set of safety standards right so if you were to tour say you know some type of hosting facility a mining operation in china you not not all the time, but like you could see you know, wires all over the place, things that would clearly be seen as sort of, uh, I mean, just clear risks, I, I would say. But what they achieve then is lower operating costs, lower capital costs to set that, set up that operation in the first place, versus now probably being hit with you know fees for lawyers, higher higher um, capex costs in in the U.S. Um, and and so that that's a big challenge. I think the other thing too is is uh, you know, what we're just seeing globally in terms of supply chains, shipping, things like that. I mean, it's slow to set up, and frankly, a lot of what miners need—not even just hardware, which is obviously well documented, documented that it's coming from China or Southeast Asia, and you have to ship that to the U.S.—but also just other sort of like electrical infrastructure, electrical pieces that you need to ship in from now across the globe where a lot of Chinese miners probably, you know, could even could ship in much more locally, access those materials more locally previously. But now if they're setting up an operation here, it's just a much higher cost even in, in general. One clear sort of advantage that North American miners had was just the robustness of our capital markets and our access to relatively cheap capital versus what I think is accessible elsewhere in the world. And you sort of are able to see um, some of the re results of that, even in just press releases with sort of you know, miners with making very large sort of equipment purchases or building building out sort of multi mega, 100, 100 megawatt sites. Um, and so that's something that miners have clearly, clearly tapped into or just various types of instruments there. And then uh, I think you also wanting to make sure that they're sort of using then the assets that they do have. So Bitcoin, if they're miners, so they have a generally a large pool of Bitcoin where they can do, uh, kind of take advantage of things like Bitcoin backed loans to then get cash, put that cash to work, um, as well as using their equipment as collateral um, and taking out loans against that, that equipment as well. And so that's something that they've taken advantage of. I think it's something, other instruments that I think they well, we'll see sort of growing use of are just varying types of hedging products. And they're definitely being used today. But I think part of it is that the industry is frankly still even, it's maturing rapidly, but I would still call it even a little bit mature. And I think we'll see you know, continued use and on in growing use of just different types of products that have existed for a long time in sort of legacy markets that other industries sort of know how to use well that I think miners are just beginning to sort of understand in some cases.